Hi, welcome back to McClutchy Maths. My name is Natalie McClutchy and we are continuing our series today on sequences, in particular arithmetic sequences, and we're going to look at some problems involving population growth and decline. This is a topic that's not covered in a lot of different textbooks, so if your topic isn't covered in your textbook, this is the video for you. In this particular video, I'm going to do some worked examples and then we'll talk about what's coming up next. And this video is aimed at our students in year 11 and 12 across Australia in general maths and in math methods. Okay, let's get started with our first worked example. We have a population of flamingos, PN, and it was 2,200 and it's increasing by 115 birds per year. How many years will it take for the population to reach over 4,000 flamingos? Now, it's very important to unpack the question properly. The first thing you would notice is that you're being asked to look at a population of flamingos, PN. So you need to use that same notation that's in the question when you're providing your answer. Most of your different recurrence relations and general rules will be looking at things like um, VN or AN as your final answer, but you need to now substitute the letter a P um, for population. Okay, so the next thing you need to think about is what kind of sequence is it now? In my video series so far, we've only talked about arithmetic sequence, sequences, but we are going to talk about geometric sequences in the videos that are coming up. So by the time you finish this unit and you're sitting an exam, they're not telling you in the question what kind of sequence that it is, so you need to work that out for yourself. So looking at this, we know that it's increasing by the same amount of birds every single year. So it's a fixed number of 115. So that means there's a common difference. And we would define that now as an arithmetic sequence. And it's a model of appreciation or growth. We've looked at depreciation in our last video, and this is kind of like the opposite when you have population growth. So instead of taking that 115 away every year, you're gonna be adding 115. So my next thing is we're going to write our general rule for appreciation. Now, I've basically pulled out our depreciation model from our previous video. I've substituted instead of using the letter V for value, I'm now using P, which is the variable that the question is using for population. And you'll notice this is not the general rule of your formula sheet because we have a amount at time zero, which is 2,200. So your general rule is really only for pure sequences where there's not really a context that's given to you. And it's um, simply term one, term two, term three. In a situation where you've got a value at time zero, you need to modify the rule so that you're adding the growth, not taking it away. In our previous video, as I've already mentioned, with depression, Depreciation. we took away ND because it was depreciation. But this is appreciation, it's growing, so we need to add. Okay, now we're gonna substitute in our known variables. We know that the starting population was 2,200, so that would be P0. Now, if you're wanting to use your general rule off your formula sheet, what you need to do, because that's got term one in there, so you'd need to add the 115 first, and so your value for term one would be 2,315. And then you can use the general rule with an N minus one in brackets. But because we're starting at time zero and we wanna find the value at the end of the year, we're going to remove that rule with the N minus one and just use N. And our value for N is 115. We also know the population needs to get to 4,000. So that's our value for the future for PN. And what we're trying to find here is the value of N. How many years would that be? So now if we rearrange our algebra and solve for n, we're taking 2,200 from both sides. Now we're going to divide both sides by 115 and we'll find that n is equal to 15.65 years. Now, if you were asked um, to give an exact amount, 15.65 years, then you could give your answer exactly like this, although it's better to change that into years and months because that would give a more exact time. However, in this case, we're asked for just years. So at year 15, the population hasn't quite reached 4,000 flamingos yet, but at year 16, it will definitely be up to 4,000 flamingos. So we're going to say it reaches that population. If you're only measuring at the end of every year, then it would be at the end of year 16. However, it is technically 15.65, but in a final answer, it's good to give a rounded finish. So that's why you always write a statement at the end because the question doesn't have n in it to find n. 
Okay, let's look at another worked example. We've now got a population of giraffes in a national park, GN. So notice the variables change this time. And its population is 124 and it's increasing by 45 giraffes per year. What would the population be at the end of 10 years? So once again, we need to identify our sequence type. And because it's increasing by a fixed physical amount every year of 45 giraffes, so that's our common difference. So therefore it's an arithmetic sequence. And we also notice the question tells us a growth model. So that means we're going to be using that same formula that we used in worked example one. So let's write that general rule down. Notice again, I've changed the P now to a G because that's what the variable is that's given to us in the question. And now we simply need to substitute in the variables that we know. We know that the population starts with G0 at 124 giraffes and we are adding 45 each year. So at time zero when we started, we've got 124. During that year to the end of year one, we've now got another 45 giraffes. That's why we don't use the model that's on a formula sheet because it uses term one, not term zero. If we follow that through and solve for n, taking a few steps to show our working, we'll find that G10 will be equal to 574. But we need to write a statement because G10 is not in our question, it's a worded problem. So we're going to finish our question with the population will be 574 giraffes. Now, if your answer, um, and sometimes it happens, let's say it was 574.3 giraffes. Well, you need to recognize that you can't have 0.3 of a giraffe unless the giraffe is dead and then it will therefore be no longer included in the population of giraffes. So you would need to round appropriately. If you've got 574.3, well, it hasn't reached 575 giraffes yet. So you'd be rounding down to 574, which is our normal rule for rounding when it's below 0.5. However, if it was 574.8 giraffes, in this case, you wouldn't quite round up to 575 because that would not be accurate. The park hasn't quite reached 575 giraffes yet. It will in the next year. So in that case, you might round down. However, in most cases, most marking schemes will allow for either direction. 574 could be around a number or 575. Fortunately, in this question, we've got a very straightforward question with no rounding required. It came to it a perfect answer. In our third worked example, the global population of the yellow spotted ostrich, which is a fictional bird shown on the right hand side of your screen, is at the end of 2020, 25,000 ostriches and it's considered to be endangered. The population is declining by 4,750 birds per year. In what year will the ostrich be extinct? So once again, you've got a question you need to unpack and decide for yourself, is it going to be an arithmetic or a geometric sequence? Well. I'm guessing because you're watching this video, you know it's going to be arithmetic because this is an arithmetic sequence video. But like I said, in an exam, you won't know. So it's always good to think about what kind of context it is and what kind of rule should you use. So it's declining by a fixed number. That means we have a common difference. It's arithmetic, but this time it's a decline model. The model is decreasing, which means we can use our depreciation formula. It's the same as the formula we've used in worked example one and two. Instead of the plus though, we use a subtraction. So let's write our general rule for depreciation, but we're going to use the variable P instead of the variable V, because V stands for value and implies that we're talking about money. P is usually a population variable, so we're going to use P. PN equals P0 minus ND. So once again, we're going to substitute in our known variables. So we're trying to get down to the point where the ostrich is extinct, sorry ostrich. And so that means the population will be zero when there's no more of those birds. Um, Technically, you could argue that once it got to one, then it would be extinct because it can't reproduce, but let's take it as zero. And our population is going to be 25,000. That's our starting point at P0. We're taking away an amount every year, 4,750 birds multiplied by the number of years. So now let's solve for um, N and find out how many years that will take. So now we're going to add 4,750 N to both sides of our equation, divide both sides by 4,750 and we get N equals 5.2. So at the end of the fifth year, our bird is almost extinct. During the next year, it becomes extinct. So we need to write a statement. It'll become extinct during 2026. Now notice the question told us a starting point for the year end of 2020. So that is our time zero is actually at the beginning of 2021. So time, um, time one will be the end of 2021. 
end of 2022, 23, 24, 25. So 2025 is our five years, but into the next year is when the bird becomes extinct. So it becomes extinct during 2026. So it's very careful that you really carefully, even though you're only adding five, Notice that if you just added 2025 plus 5, it would have given you the answer of 2025, which is not the correct year because it was at the end of 2020 and into the next year. So that's why it's really important. Do some counting on your fingers and be very careful not to just add 5 to the year. Whenever you're working with years, you always need to sort of think it through very logically. Our last example today, thanks for staying with me, is looking at the population of coral finches, another fictional bird, and that's described by a recurrence relation. P0 equals 823,540, comma, Pn plus 1 equals Pn minus 7.35. Determine the population at the end of the 11th year. So in this particular case, we're given the starting amount. We're told also the common difference is minus 7.35. We could translate that information and use a general rule. But in this case, I'm going to show you how to do this on the calculator. Okay, got the calculator ready. Now, firstly, what I'm going to put into the calculator is this value here for P0. So we'll put that in there, 823. 540. This is called the iterative function on your calculator. If I press equals, it drops it down. You'll see it on a Casio calculator in two places on the screen. I have another calculator that when I do that, it actually disappears in the top left hand corner and just appears in the bottom right hand screen. Other calculators do different things. You'll have to play around and work out how to do this with yours, but it's a fairly simple function. Usually involves pressing an enter button or an equals button of some kind. Okay, now we're going to be subtracting 7.35. So if I do 7.35 on the calculator, this will give me the answer at the end of the first year. And then if I keep pressing the button, I need to count, um, count in my head, end of the second year, end of the third year, fourth year, fifth year, sixth year, seventh year, eighth year, ninth year, tenth year. At the end of the 11th year, I've now got 823,459.1. Five birds. Now you might be asking you the question, okay, well that's very easy. I just round that down to 459. Well, technically speaking, this is a growth model. Now during the year, as we're reducing our number of finches, we've actually got to a point during the year where it was 408. 823,460 birds right at, um, just before the end of the year and then as we got down with this recurrence relation we finished the year with a fraction more of a bird than would really be possible so yes it is tempting to round down but technically speaking the population isn't quite at 823,459 birds yet it will be just as the year kicks over so really what we do have is 823,460 birds in reality. So I think that little one through, because you've got this grow, uh, decline model, and as we're getting there at the end of the year, we haven't quite lost that bird yet. We've, because it's a model with a decimal number, we've lost part of a bird, but technically speaking, probably January 2, that bird will now be extinct. So when you're rounding just think about the context in this case i would actually round up to 460. however i have seen marking schemes particularly by um, curriculum bodies in your state and they will accept it in either direction what they won't accept though is a decimal number for a real context a real bird you can't have 0.15 of a bird um, it would not be a live bird so you definitely need to round to a whole number and write a statement Okay, you might be wondering how to represent that on your working on an exam because you've done that on your calculator. You need to show some working, however, because we always know that our working gets marks attached to it. So the first thing I would do is write something down about what kind of sequence you've identified. It's an arithmetic sequence with a depreciation or decline of population. The second thing I would write down are these words using iterative function or using the calculator so that the teacher knows what method you've used to find your results. Now here's where students then fall over a little bit. 
You actually need to show that you've actually used the calculator. And what I would recommend doing is writing down the answers at intervals. Now, if you only had to find five terms, write all five. If you had to write 30 terms, you might write every fifth term or every 10th term. In this case, I'm gonna do every fifth. I've written the first one to show that I understand that P0 and P1 are not one and the same. So I've shown my amount for the end of the first year and then I'm doing every five. So I've got the fifth term, the 10th term, and then finally my answer, the 11th term. So I've shown some working in between that I'm using a calculator. Yes, it is a little bit tedious. It's a lot more tedious than just pressing the equals button 11 times because you have to do some writing and some work. However, it at least shows that you've used the calculator to do the work and you know what you're doing. The last thing you're going to do is write your statement. The finch population will be approximately 823,460 birds. And I've written the word approximately in there. As we've just discussed, it's not going to be exactly that many birds right on the end of the 11th year. And if you round it up or down, it doesn't make a massive difference. Chances are you'll be marked correct as long as you have rounded to the nearest bird. What's coming up next? Well, let's have a look at what we're going to be doing in our very next video. We're going to look at some of an arithmetic sequence for our math method students in grade 11 right across Australia. And then I'm going to kick off a very similar series to this one looking at geometric sequences. So we'll kick it off with an introduction. We will go into different types of contexts like depreciation, population growth and decline, as well as compound interest. And then I will kick off with some complex questions from past exams where you will have to work out, is it arithmetic or geometric? So do stay tuned for those videos. And the best way to stay tuned is to subscribe to the channel. And I'd like to say a big welcome today to all of our new subscribers. Thank you for joining us here at McClutchy Maths. And if you're wanting to find out more and get some tips and tricks and know when new videos are being released, you need to follow us on Facebook as well. Um, great place to find out when new videos are coming on. In fact, I find that I get most of the views on my videos simply from a referral on Facebook. So if you're on Facebook, join us there. And I'd like to say a big thank you to all of the people who watch these videos, to the teachers who give me feedback, it's fantastic. And if you've got a request for a particular kind of question, you've got some help that you need, you can always contact me at mcclutchymass at yahoo.com. Thanks again. I'm Natalie McClutchy. Have a wonderful day.